Now, if you're like me, you probably have hundreds if not thousands of records inside of your Airtable database. And this can get a little bit cumbersome sometimes when we're trying to do different things in there, especially when it comes to linking to different tables. However, a new feature just released by Airtable now allows us to limit the records that we have access to when we're linking uh, from one table to another. So if you're interested in getting a deep dive on this new feature, you've come to the right place. Let's jump on in. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we build robust automated solutions inside of Airtable. In this video, like I said, we're going to be taking a look at this awesome new Airtable feature where we can limit our selection of linked records inside of uh, a field. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Inside of this uh, database, you'll see we have a very simple example that has contacts and the interactions linked to those contacts. So let's just really quickly take a quick walk through how this would work. So we've got contacts here with a status, and then we will link those contacts to interactions. Of course, a normal database will have a lot more going on, but for the sake of this uh, quick tutorial, this is all that we really need. Now, in terms of status, let's pick a two uh, status uh, example. Let's have leads and let's have clients. So, you know, when people first come into our CRM, they'll be categorized as a lead. And uh, after that, if we've nurtured that relationship and they decide to buy from us, then we'll call them clients uh, for this example. So every single one of these uh, different uh, contacts in here is going to have a status, one or the other, right? All right, so there we go. Everyone now has a status assigned to them. And when we go ahead and we link them to the interactions, what we would expect is that we connect the contact to an interaction and we're basically recording that we had some sort of interaction with that person, right? So let's go ahead and build one out. You'll see that I've already set up an interaction ID here, which automatically populates with today's date. And we've got types of interactions. We have email, in-person, or phone call. Of course, you could have you know, many others as well. So let's suppose we had contact with uh, contact number three, and that was an email. So now this interaction ID will automatically be populated with those three fields being strung together into you know, the string. And uh, we could do that with multiple contacts as well. Let's say we had contact four and this was an in-person. Well, great. So you know, when I'm picking these, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually going to the contact. So let's suppose when we record an interaction, for this example again, you know, maybe we only record an interaction with a client and we record interactions with leads somewhere else or they have a, you know, they live in a different place or something like that. For this example, we would then want to filter so that we don't have all of these contacts that are leads in our view because we would never pick contact one or contact two unless their status is updated, in which case then we would want to see them. So that's where this new feature comes into play. So let's take a look at how we can set this up. So first what we need to do is create a view that is specific to clients. So let's create a new grid view. And this is going to be the clients only view. And we're going to apply a filter easy enough to that status. And we're going to only look at clients. So you see just within a few mouse clicks, we've already eliminated everyone from our view that is a lead. Now they're still here. They're just not being shown here on this particular view. All right, so now jumping into interactions again, we can go up to the field for contacts and in customize field type, this is that new feature, we have a new option here which says limit the record selection to a view. If I click this, it now gives me the option of what view I want to see. And I can say I want to see the client's only view. Let's go ahead and save that and take a look at what happens now. When I click someone to add, you'll see that I'm only given those options for folks who have that status clients because we've already determined that view on the uh, other table, on the contacts table. So really quickly and easily, now I'm able to get a streamlined vision of the different uh, records that I have available to link to here. And the really cool part about this, of course, because it's Airtable, that this is all dynamic, right? So going back into the grid view, you know, if we're taking a look at this, we have our contact one is a lead. And so we don't have them coming up here in our contacts. But 
if I change their status to clients, now suddenly they will be accessible here. So this is uh, you know just a quick way that you can get this all set up. I'm sure that there are many, many ways that you would envision putting this to use in your database. And perhaps one of the most exciting is when we have a form view, if we have this, let's go ahead and open up this form as an example. In this form, that rule applies where we're not having all of the contacts pull in here. You'll see that contact two, five, seven, nine, 10, 11 are all missing from this view because of the rule that we set up with limiting that. So this is a great way that you can make your forms more dynamic as well and even bake in a little bit of logic to them. All right, as always, I hope you found this to be super helpful. If you did and you wanna see more Airtable content like this, be sure to click subscribe to this channel. And of course, swing by our website as well and check out the different uh, freebies that we offer and uh, things that we have put together to help you get more proficient in Airtable. And in the meantime, Best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.